Hi, I'm Glenn Heemstra with Futurist.com. Today I'm talking with Kate Vitasek about her new book, which has just come out this uh, week, uh, the first week of uh, February here in 2010. It's called Vested Outsourcing. Uh, hi, Kate. How are you? Very good. Thank you, Glenn, for having me here today. Sure. Uh, tell me about Vested Outsourcing. What uh, is the gist of the book, and how did you uh, and your team come to produce it? Great question. Vested outsourcing is really a business model paradigm shift to help companies understand that there really is a better way to outsourcing. I always like to think of outsourcing as uh, today being the Wild West. There really are no rules. Um, what we've tried to do is create five rules that will help companies transform how they outsource. It is based on uh, a, a philosophy of outsourcing for results versus activities. And we have five rules that you follow. There's a lot of incentives. We really try to leverage an incentive-based philosophy to bring transformational results to uh, the work instead of just focusing on activities. Well, tell me about outsourcing itself. What, what kinds of enterprises should consider outsourcing and what kinds should not? And what kinds of things, when you're thinking of outsourcing, what are the kinds of things that you're usually dealing with? Um, well, Glenn, Companies can outsource just about anything. I'm sure that you uh, actually outsource your own dry cleaning. Basically, the rule of thumb is anybody that can do something better, faster, or cheaper is, uh, should be outsourced. Outsourcing really dates back to uh, the earliest dates of uh, cavemen when people had barter exchange systems so that they could be more efficient. Um, it was actually featured in Adam Smith in his Wealth of Nation uh, in 1776. He wrote about division of labor being one of the most productive ways that uh, organizations can improve their efficiencies. And in the 1930s, uh, you might have heard of an economist named Ronald Coase. He actually won a Nobel Prize for his work. And many credit um, his work around the nature of, fir of the firm uh, with teaching people and businesses about, uh, I, I like to say in its simplest term, business is a math problem. Uh, there's transaction costs involved with when you do things, and he really looked at things and said, you know, business isn't just about the manufacturing or the production cost or the transportation cost. You have to look at the end-to-end -end picture or the transaction cost and the economics around that. And if you look at outsourcing, what we want to do is outsource to someone who's better, faster, and cheaper than we are. And if you can find that combination, you're going to save money as a firm. Okay, well, let's, I'm going to come back to uh, how vested outsourcing is different from more traditional or let's call it less effective outsourcing. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the politics of outsourcing just for a little bit. Uh, I had a conversation yesterday with a uh, large government agency mm -hmm. who, with, with whom I'm going to do some strategic planning. And we were talking about what could we do with the lunchtime. And I said, well, one of the things we could talk about would be vested outsourcing, this new concept mm -hmm. that I'm learning about. And they said, oh, no, we don't want to talk about outsourcing. That's now a dirty word in our organization. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, the outsourcing obviously gets a bad rap in terms of, well, it's a way to drive down labor costs, it's a way to destroy unions, it's a way to, and, and um, it generally it gets kind of a bad reputation for some good reasons, I'm sure, but tell me how you guys approach that. How, how do you know whether this is a good thing to be doing or not a good thing to be doing? Uh, how, how do you approach the kind of the whole politics of outsourcing? Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting you talk about outsourcing being a dirty word. It does have a lot of negative connotations today. And that's because uh, I think a lot of folks misinterpret the key definitions between outsourcing and offshoring. Outsourcing is really do, uh, letting someone else perform a task or a set of activities where they can be better, faster, or cheaper. It doesn't necessarily mean that jobs were sent to manufacturing jobs were sent to uh, China or that your call center or technical support jobs were sent to India. And actually, it's uh, very funny. I actually had a woman just call me this past week after our research uh, came out and the book was released. And she said, I'm presenting to Congress. I've become an outsourcing and anti-outsourcing advocate because my, uh, my entire company, my department was offshored. Uh, we lost all our jobs and, you know, the U.S. is going to hell in a handbasket because we're losing all of our jobs. And I said, whoa, stop, stop right there. I said, outsourcing is different than offshoring. And it sounded to me like she, her beef was with yeah, offshoring, sending your jobs overseas. You don't have to send your jobs overseas. 
actually many, many companies today outsource to companies right here in the U.S. I actually worked for a $1 billion outsource provider and all of their work was done in region. Now yes, they had facilities all over the, all over the world, but in Asia, the work was kept in Asia. In Europe, the work was kept in Europe. And in the U.S., it was kept right here in the U.S. And so a lot of work is done locally. It's just done by a different company than yourself. Okay. So, Kate, uh, obviously the, the purpose of vested outsourcing is to uh, teach us a better way to do outsourcing. What, is the, what are the key differences between outsourcing that fails and outsourcing that works? I know that you've suggested five rules. What, what is it that makes uh, vested outsourcing better? Well, I think at the heart it is the five rules. Too many companies took Peter Drucker's advice, do what you do best and outsource the rest, but they didn't uh -huh. know how to do it. And what we've done is really show uh, some of the rules and, and try to put uh, uh, a, a structured approach to well, how they you do take, that. Take us through those five rules briefly. So the first rule is outcome-based versus transaction-based outsourcing. So we want to uh, create that, uh, move away from outsourcing activities to uh, outsourcing for outcomes or results. The second is to focus on the what, not the how. Okay. Uh, we uh, you know, need to outsource to the experts. We shouldn't tell the experts how to do things. Yeah, you'd be surprised at how often I get hired to do a strategic planning job and then they want to tell me exactly everything that they want me to do and I think, well, why exactly did you hire me? So that's what you're talking about. That's exactly right. Uh, and so if I'm going to focus on outcomes, I, the rule number three is to have clearly defined and measurable desired outcomes. What are they and how am I going to measure success? You've got to know how to define success. And once you've defined it, rule number four is to create a pricing model uh, that uses incentives for the service provider to transform the work to achieve those results. We don't want to just focus on the activities. It's not about the work, it's about transforming the work. And then rule number five is to have a governance structure with insight versus oversight. Uh, many companies have uh, not been as happy as they, they would have liked with their outsourcing uh, relationships and have chosen to micromanage them. Well, micromanaging them is not going to help fix the problem. Uh, we need to actually move away from oversight into insight. Okay, so those are the five rules. And as I interpreted those five rules, and, and in fact the whole uh, approach of vested outsourcing, uh, I saw it as uh, uh, teaching people how to create a win-win situation. Essentially, this is how I can win as the person who's doing the outsourcing, but this is how you can win as the person who's providing the service, uh, services to me, and this is how it can all work together so that it's better for everybody. Is that really the gist of, of what is here? Is it a win-win? Actually, it's not just a win-win, it's a three-way win. A properly structured outsourcing deal, it lowers the cost for the company that's outsourcing, brings higher margins to the service provider, and increases the service levels to the customer. And if you can't craft a solution or an outsourcing deal that transforms the way we work to achieve that three-way win, you don't have a vested deal. In essence, I as a service provider am vested in the interest of you and your customers to craft that. And you should be vested in my interest, which is to drive me more profits. Yeah, see I love that as, as a service provider myself. Uh, to have somebody interested in, in me being more profitable, me being more successful, as well as them being more profitable, more successful, it all made sense to me that this model would really work to do that. Right. Um, really, we're creating a business model, uh, a contract where we have vested interest, and it's, uh, we use incentives to transform that and achieve those three-way wins. The book is Vested Outsourcing. I've been talking with Kate Vitasek. Uh, it sounds like a, a really useful book for somebody who's uh, interested in improving their business. Uh, where will people find uh, both the book and information on the program that you do at the University of Tennessee? And how do they, how do they find you? Um, they can find all of that um, on a dedicated site from the University of Tennessee uh, at www.vestedoutsourcing.com. We have a whole website devoted to the topic. Uh, you can learn about our courses. We have open enrollment courses as well as a certification program that we're, we're launching this spring. Um, you can actually buy the book from that site. You can uh, have a direct link to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, or if you'd like a signed copy, you can actually uh, purchase a signed copy as well. Great. Okay. Thank you, Kate. 
Uh, I'm Glenn Heemstra. This is Futures.com. And once again, the book is Vested Outsourcing.